Hey everyone, this is a river generator I've been working on for the past couple of months. Just working on it on the weekends. This is about my fourth version of it. It's slowly gotten larger and larger as I realise it takes quite a lot of uh, surface area to produce about 5 watts. I think about there is optimal. Yeah. I think the tubes must be filling up just a little bit. Just a bit of a drink there. <laughs> We're down at a side stream of the Wymac River. It's quite a large river, but I found a nice little shallow bit that I can place it in with some decent flow. Turns out I didn't even need the floating pontoons because you can just position it perfectly to sit there, and that makes the most amount of power. Oh, I'm getting 12 volts out of it, which is too high for the USB. I'm going to run it straight into a car charger and that'll regulate the output of 5 volts. There's little too much going on at the river. I'll be able to give you a close up of how I was measuring the 5 watt current flow. But basically, it was giving me over 5 volts. So I ran everything through one of these little car charger devices. So I'll demonstrate here I've got a battery producing about 15 volts. Take the positive to the center pin. That should be the negative. There we go, and it lights up. Now, I plug my USB monitoring device in. Let's use this one here. I've got this phone here. Alright, charging. And there we go, look at that. 7.5 watts. That is what we're talking about. That is good. So the load tester is what I am using to get the official results. Set it to say one amp. One. And that gives five watts. So I was able to crank it up. And as I cranked it up on my generator, the voltage started dropping. But what I was watching is the wattage here. And I peaked at about seven watts. So that is about the maximum I was able to get. But this is a great device. This and this in combo lets you really check on everything. Gives you a total watt hours as well. 5.2 volts. 5 volts. 5 watts. Here's what I first started out with during lockdown made it out of just random bits I had in my garage then I tried ordering some computer fans but they are kind of an AC device and don't work very well as a generator I found out a microwave fan works quite well so I tried to scale it up with this and it just ended up looking very dangerous so I'm moving on to the bicycle design and uh, I need some gears, so I'm, I bought another wheel and I'm just cutting out some gearing from it. Kind of interesting uh, rubbish left over, had to squeeze it all down into the bin. And learning how to shorten a bicycle chain without their special tool. A little bit of a trick, but it's not too bad with the angle grinder and a punch. I bought this hoverboard, it comes with a good stack of lithium batteries and a three phase motor. And here's the configuration that it's going to be in. I've got it all put together, this is my first version, slightly smaller, using cut PVC pipes that took ages, ended up not being that efficient. Uh, the light was just flashing on and off. In the end what I needed was a bigger three phase rectifier with bigger capacitors and to spin it faster so I designed this gearing system using three bicycle wheels and two chains it gives it about a 1 to 5 ratio so the generator at the back spins five times faster than the water wheel turning it at the front here's how much pipe costs 1 meter $49 so I got these even bigger ones this would have been about $100 per meter but I got three meters from a old construction site and that was about $20 for all of that 
Now the end caps, everything about these bloody PVC pipes is so expensive. The end caps are fifteen dollars each, so that would have been sixty dollars for four of them. So I thought bugger that and went and bought some plywood and thick plastic and drilled holes into it to make end caps and you'll see how I seal it up in a bit. So the pipe was thick enough I could put tiny screws into it and then just make sure all the sharp edges are gone. Filed it off, any splinters and bought this um, thick plastic matting, there's a couple of layers of it there and then just taped it up for a good seal. This is all just um, just an experiment so of course if it was a final product I'd buy the proper end caps but at the moment I don't want to waste too much money I don't know if it works at all yet and it definitely held water until I started dragging it along the ground at the end here's my uh, rectifier with a much larger capacitor definitely works well Now, with these bigger floats, it wasn't quite sitting in the water deep enough. So I have three volts coming out, it's fluctuating a little bit. And I've got my USB light just rigged up there. And it's flashing a wee bit. But it's fairly bright. So here I'm ditching the curved fins just for some straight plywood pieces and there it is working perfectly nice and balanced smooth rotation each fin dipping deep into the water good speed on the turbine at the back and here's the LED running pretty consistently with the new capacitor 5 volts there 1 watt exactly and that's very bright So it should be able to do um, almost two of these lights with the current flow rate there. But it's not right out in the middle of the stream either. You can see it really barely fits in the car. And I, I originally wanted to design this as a portable thing you take with you camping or just on a day trip. But that is not how it's ended up. So I'm probably going to abandon the project here. I'm still going to work on a smaller scale one that might work in a waterfall. So you have a little bit more power there. Seven has been the maximum. Well thank you for watching everyone. It's definitely been a fun project and it was a success in the end. I managed to charge my phone, run some lights. I'm definitely going to continue working on one for a waterfall that's a little bit smaller. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.